Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 118 of the Listening Time Podcast. Thank you all for listening. I hope you're all doing well today and that you're ready to learn a little bit about buying a house in the U.S. Uh, that's the topic of today's episode. And I've never bought a house in the U.S. Uh, I've never been through this process before. So I'm going to talk from uh, the knowledge that I have, uh, but not from experience. So I'm not giving any advice here. And if you live in the U.S. and you want to buy a house, then you'll definitely need to uh, consult experts and do research and all of that. But I just kind of want to give some general points regarding buying a house in the U.S. just to give you an idea of what it's like. Uh, and I'll also talk a little bit about owning a house and the things that you need to pay that you might not know about. So we'll talk about these different things today. I think this will be educational for all of us, me included, because I had to do some research and uh, get some ideas online while I was uh, preparing for this episode. So it was also educational for me. And I think you'll all learn a little bit about this topic from this episode, and it should be interesting. Remember that if you want my help understanding native speakers when they speak fast, make sure to check out my membership. And in particular, if you become a Listening Time family member, you'll get my advanced podcast episodes where I speak at normal speed. So this is the practice that you need if you want to be able to understand native speakers when they speak fast at normal speed. And of course, if you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker, then you can check out my ebook, my collection of three short mystery stories, which I wrote in English and translated into both Spanish and Portuguese. So all of those links are in the episode description below this episode. And of course, you have the transcript for this episode down there as well. And if you like this podcast, please share it with anyone else you know who might find it useful, and please give it a five-star rating and a review. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about buying a house. So one of the most important things to consider when buying a house is the mortgage. So a mortgage is a loan that you receive uh, when you want to purchase a house and you don't have the money to buy it uh, with cash 100%, you need to get a loan uh, in order to have the money to buy this house. So a loan just refers to money that somebody lends to someone else. That means that they give it to someone else, but that other person needs to pay them back with interest, usually. So that's a loan. A mortgage is a type of loan specifically for houses and uh, things related to that. So this is, of course, one of the most important things to consider because most people need a mortgage when they buy a house because uh, houses are very expensive, of course. 
So there are different types of mortgages that you can get. There are conventional mortgages. Uh, these are loans that are just ordinary, typical loans, uh, specifically for your house, right? There are conventional loans. And then there are also government-backed loans. So the government doesn't lend you money to buy a home. It's not a lender in this case. However, the government might insure a loan. The government might back a loan uh, in case you, the person who is borrowing, uh, can't pay back what you owe. So uh, the government might back certain loans um, and that's a different type of mortgage. So depending on the type of mortgage that you get, uh, you might be able to put down a different percentage for a down payment. The phrase down payment refers to the money that you need to pay up front um, when you want to buy a house. And the term upfront refers to something that you need to pay at the beginning. So you have to pay a certain percentage upfront. This is uh, called the down payment. So in the past, the norm was usually 20%. Uh, that's how much money that people would typically put down upfront and then they would pay the rest of this off throughout the years uh, and they would pay the interest on that mortgage. So that's still a normal thing. 20% is still a normal amount and many people still view it as the standard. However, you can put less money down nowadays than 20%, um, but you will probably have to pay mortgage insurance. This is an added uh, cost for people that want to put less money down, so they have a cheaper payment now, but then they'll have to pay extra afterwards. So it depends on your own situation and it depends on what type of mortgage you want to get and how much money you want to put down. But let's say that there's still the standard of putting down 20% as the down payment for the house. Uh, that's pretty common. So there's also the question of fixed rate mortgages and adjustable rate mortgages. So the United States is unique in the sense that the main type of mortgage, the primary mortgage uh, that is the most common type in the US is a 30 year fixed mortgage. What does that mean? Well, when I say that it is fixed, this means that the interest rate does not change. This means that it doesn't go up even if uh, other interest rates go up uh, throughout the economy. So this is a fixed rate mortgage. Uh, and then 30 year, just refers to the amount of time uh, you will have to pay back that amount of money. So the standard mortgage in the US is a 30 year fixed mortgage. So this is not the common type of mortgage that most people have in other countries. So this is why I said that this is pretty unique to the US. So this is what many, many people have when they buy a house here. However, some people 
have an adjustable rate mortgage. And as you can probably guess, this just means that the interest rate can change over time. So uh, if interest rates go up uh, later on, then your adjustable rate mortgage might also go up as well. Your interest rate might increase in the future. So as you can imagine, this is a very different type of agreement when it comes to uh, finding a mortgage, finding someone that will lend this money to you. Uh, it's very different if you have a 30-year fixed mortgage or if you have an adjustable rate mortgage. And you can also get a mortgage that isn't 30 years. Uh, there are also some other timelines that also exist. But these 30-year fixed mortgages are very common. So when you're looking to buy a house in the U.S., usually you'll get pre-approved for a mortgage. This just means that a lender conducts an investigation to see if they are likely to lend you this money, uh, if they're likely to uh, give you this mortgage. And once they've decided that they will probably uh, be able to lend you this money, they will pre-approve you. And so what that does is it shows that you are a qualified buyer. So when you go to look for different properties, uh, when you are looking uh, at different houses that you might buy, you can show the seller of the house that you've been pre-approved. This means that uh, you are a qualified buyer. You're someone who will most likely be able to get a mortgage to buy the house. So this is important because sellers don't want to waste their time with someone who isn't likely to uh, even have the money to buy the house, right? So getting pre-approved for a mortgage is usually one of the steps in the process of buying a house. And then after that, you can find the right lender. When a lender pre-approves you, that doesn't mean that you have to get the money from them, right? You can find another lender afterwards so uh, you can find the right lender for you based on your situation and the type of mortgage that you want. You find a lender uh, who will lend you the money. And you will probably also work with a real estate agent. So real estate agents help you through the whole process of buying a home or selling a home if you're the seller. So you can use a real estate agent to help you out because they have a lot of knowledge of the local market. So they know much more than you do probably about the housing market in your city. So uh, that's a huge advantage. Uh, and they can represent you during the negotiation process. That's also really important. And they can help you with the paperwork and all of that other stuff, right? So a lot of people choose to work with a real estate agent because it ends up being very helpful. But of course, it costs money you're going to pay for this, obviously. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. Uh, in English, when we say that you keep something in mind, this just means that you don't forget this, right? You remember this as 
something potentially important. So it's important to keep that in mind because that's another fee that you'll have to pay. A fee is just an amount of money that you have to pay for something, some service or something like that. So of course, uh, it costs money. You'll have to pay a fee for a real estate agent. So once you've found a house that you really want, uh, it's time to make an offer. So uh, once uh, the seller accepts your offer, then you've kind of come to an agreement on how much money you want to pay for the house and uh, the seller agrees to that amount and uh, you have a deal, so to say. However, it's not over yet because after that, there's usually an appraisal. So what happens is in this case, the lender who's going to lend you money, your mortgage, right, to buy the house, they want to make sure that the property value is in line with the amount of money that they're going to lend you. In English, when we say that something is in line with something else, we're saying that it matches or it agrees with something else. Before we continue with the episode, let me tell you about our sponsor, Sleep Number. Sleep Number smart beds give you an individualized sleep experience, which makes getting high quality sleep effortless every night. Sleep Number smart beds have adjustable firmness on each side, so couples can choose their own ideal firmness, how much comfort and support is on each side of the bed, so it's perfect for both of you. Sleep Number smart beds also help keep you asleep because they automatically respond to your movements throughout the night, and so they adjust to every move so you're both comfortable. These beds also show you the quality of the sleep that you're getting. They learn how you sleep, and they provide you personalized insights to help you learn to sleep even better. Science shows that quality sleep helps improve your mental, emotional, physical, and relationship health. So if you're waking up tired, here are some tips to help you sleep your best. If you have some tough workouts, then the Sleep Number Smart Bed can help you get the quality sleep you need to recover from those workouts and perform at your best because these beds contour to your neck, shoulders, back, and hips, and so they provide you the support that you need, and there's even weight distribution for more comfortable sleep. And if you're feeling hot this summer, sleep experts recommend keeping your bedroom temperature at 65 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit for comfortable sleep. You can use your air conditioner or fan with your temperature balancing sleep number smart bed and bedding to help both of you keep cool and sleep just right. And do you and your partner disagree on comfort? That's pretty normal because 8 out of 10 couples prefer a different mattress firmness than their partner. But don't worry because Sleep Number Smart Beds let you choose your ideal firmness on each side of the bed and they automatically respond to your individual movements throughout the night to keep you both sleeping comfortably. My sleep number is 35 and my wife's is 40. But that's not a problem because each side of the sleep number smart bed can be personalized for our own individual preferences. And let me mention one other benefit of getting quality sleep, which is mental well-being. As a language learner, getting quality sleep is essential for my mental focus, so I need to get a good night's sleep. I'm sure you agree with me that sleeping well allows you to focus better when you're doing your language learning, and a sleep number smart bed can help you get that quality sleep. Sleep next level and unlock your unique potential with a smart bed that can perform as well as you. And now, don't miss Sleep Number's biggest sale of the year, where all beds are on sale. Save 50% on the Sleep Number Limited Edition Smart Bed, plus special financing for a limited time. Only at Sleep Number stores or sleepnumber.com. See store for details. So they want to make sure that the value, the valuation of this house that you want to buy is actually uh, similar to the amount that they're gonna lend you. So they're gonna do that 
and then there will probably also be an inspection. Uh, this is to identify any issues with the home. So imagine uh, that you buy a home and then afterwards you realize that it has a bunch of problems that you didn't even know about. Uh, that would not be good. So this inspection will shed light on any problems uh, with the home. In English, when we say that something sheds light on something else, this just means that it reveals it. It um, helps you see this, right? So that's also something that's really important um, so that you can see what issues there are with the home and make sure you're not overpaying for a home that uh, potentially has a lot of problems. So these things, the appraisal, the inspection, these are some of the closing costs of buying a house. Closing costs are different fees that you have to pay for different things uh, when you buy a house. These are some of those fees, but there are other ones as well. So that's another thing to keep in mind that you are going to have closing costs when you buy a house. So there are a lot of things, a lot of fees, uh, a lot of money that is kind of hidden that you'll have to pay when you buy a house in the U.S. And so how much do houses cost nowadays in the U.S.? Well, this varies dramatically depending on uh, where you are. There's no such thing as the American housing market, right? There are only local housing markets. So the San Diego housing market, where I live, is a completely different market from uh, the housing market in Nashville, Tennessee, for example. Those are two different markets that are largely unrelated, right? So when we talk about prices of houses, it's going to be very different depending on where you are, which housing market you're talking about. So for example, the median home price in the U.S., uh, the word median refers to a way of determining the average of something. Um, that's just one way of determining an average. There are other ways, but in this case, I'll refer to the median home price. The median home price in the U.S. right now is about $416,000. So that is taking into account all of the homes in all of the different cities and states of the U.S. However, in San Diego, where I live, the median home price right now is between $900,000 and $1 million. That is a huge difference between the median home price in the U.S. Uh, and just San Diego in particular. So imagine that. Right now, in San Diego, normal homes are uh, selling for over $900,000 or a million dollars. That's a normal price for a home. <laughs> That's kind of an average price. So this can give you an idea of how expensive it is to live in a place like Southern California. It is very, very expensive. Okay. I imagine that some of you are thinking that that's crazy that people would buy a house for a million dollars and it's just a normal house. It's not a mansion, but that's 
typical nowadays in Southern California. So it's a lot of money. And lastly, what are some of the hidden fees of home ownership? When you own a home after you've already bought it, what are some of the things that you have to pay for that might not be obvious? Well, we have property tax in uh, different places in the U.S. So you have to pay tax just because you own a property, right? I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. There might be something similar where you live, and this is different in different areas, but that's one thing. Another thing is homeowner's insurance. So this will cover damage to your property and to your belongings in case something happens to your house. So a lot of people uh, need to pay this homeowner's insurance to have coverage for their house. So that's another thing. Uh, and another fee is the HOA fee. HOA stands for Homeowners Association. So some houses are part of an HOA. This is an association that is self-governing. It's not part of the government or anything. The people uh, govern this themselves, uh, people who uh, live there in that area. And what this association does is that it takes care of the maintenance of uh, the neighborhood, the repairs, the amenities, and other things like that. It maintains and repairs and keeps all of this in good order, but it also enforces rules. Like for example, maybe where you live, you can only paint your house a certain color. For example, a certain few colors. Uh, and if you violate that rule, you're going to get in trouble, right? Uh, things like that. There are rules that you need to follow if you're part of an HOA. And if you don't follow these rules, uh, they can actually uh, do some pretty bad things to you uh, and maybe even take you to court if you don't follow these rules. So this is another thing that you have to think about because you need to pay fees to this association, right? So that's another fee. And then of course, just the normal repairs that you have to make. That's another fee. Landscaping, that's another fee. So it costs a lot of money to own a home even after you've bought it. All right, why don't we stop there for today? I hope you learned a little bit from this episode. Remember that you can become a Listening Time family member if you want my advanced episodes. And remember to check out my ebook if you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker. All those links are in the episode description below this episode. All right, thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time.